Welcome to a Celtic State of Mind. I'm Paul John Dykes. We are talking about Celtic 2, Aberdeen 1. This is the Full Time Reaction Show and I'm joined by Lawrence Conley in a State of Mind studio and Brian Degnan who is fighting through the illness uh, to be involved today and we do appreciate it, Brian. We'll talk about the full game as we go through this uh, Full Time Reaction programme. But uh, let's have a wee chat about the the character there. I was just, I turned around to Lawrence at 70 minutes and says to him, you know, um, this would be a completely different story had we not got that goal. Uh, but what a goal it was to get. And um, I do have on my notes here that McCarthy looked as though he was uh, knackered at this stage. But he played a big part in that, Brian. He played a big part in the lead up to that goal. What a pass to Abada. He did, yeah, and it was actually it was pleasing to see him last the full 90 minutes, actually, although he, he did look a wee bit out. I don't know if maybe I was harsh on him in the first half when I said he hadn't really had a massive influence because I suppose if he's doing his job right, he's stopping Aberdeen doing much. And I don't think the, other than the, <clears throat> obviously the, the corner at the end in the penalty, they never really done much. I, I never really felt we were in danger. Um, they spent, you know, a lot of the game Defend, and I don't think it was they were done to do what Livingston done and you know playing anti football and sitting in. They actually we were pushing them in just mm. with the press and, and the, the authority. And yeah, I thought McCarthy showed showed good character to, to see that out. And speaking of characters, the work ethic for Kyogo is out. I mean, right. it's mad that for a striker that never had a shot and goal, that never really touched the ball that often, and yet what a, an impact he had on the result today. Mm. He was tireless, he was brave, he was excellent, and yet, you know, it was it was all about off the ball. Um, but throughout the team, great character. Uh, Big Tony said that the other week on the podcast, I think we're looking a lot more resilient. Um, and I think that came across today. That's a great point about Kugo, and there are uh, several co- comments coming through talking about him. Um, he's a selfless character. Lawrence, we'll get on to Kilgo in a wee second, but yes, I have been flying the McCarthy flag. Uh, it's another 90 minutes under the belt for him, and that's just what we need uh, between now and January. There's a lot of games to play in December before we can get reinforcements, so we need the likes of McCarthy to be contributing. Yeah, I mean, another 10 games to go before we can get anyone in. Uh, listen, I think Brian's hit the nail on the head, you know. I think he absolutely limited what Aberdeen were able to do. Mm. And, you, you know, that's what you want from your defensive midfield. It would be in the place to stop, you know, players from showing. He's he's, cut, he's cutting out the channels. I thought it was great. The pass will lead up to the goal. Maybe a bad I should have done better to finish. But, you know, McGregor's <laughs> charged it down. We've got a bit of luck. But, listen, we could have scored three or four more there, there, there today. A sure performance, uh, mind you, at the end, I'm shouting at the screen at Mikey Johnson. That's the same mistake. He's running at the defender. Yeah. You're like, Mikey, time's up. Run for the corner flag. Don't, Absolutely. Don't go to the defender because you might lose the ball and they mm-hmm. might get another chance. Just go to the corner flag. It was, but then again, that one he closed down and I didn't see the foul. Apparently, it was called back for a foul by Kologo. But, you know, I didn't see that because the camera went away by that time. But it, it looked mm-hmm. to have the, the, the ball off the boys. Feet look to be by him, and then the ref blew. You're going, well, bit of a late whistle there, ref. What about Kyogo taking a slap in the face? You know, is it violent conduct? You know, hitting someone in the, the face and meaning to? I don't know. It's the ref didn't seem to think so. But you know, great three points. It, it, it's one of those games, Aberdeen at home. You know, we've seen easy games, you know, 9 0 uh, against Mark McGee or coming back and winning 4 3 be a Sammy overhead, but. I don't think we're ever in danger of losing that. You know, a bit nervous at the end because there's only one goal in it when the corner comes in. But all, all in all, a really sure performance. I think Carter Vickers strolled it. Welsh, you know, he's willing to take the ball early. You know, he ran a bit a couple of times. I think if it had been a left-sided player, he'd have moved the ball quicker. He just yeah. looked a wee bit awkward. Mm-hmm. Tony Ralston, another cracking game, wasn't it? You know, touched on it. McCarthy getting 90 minutes into his legs. I just thought, Really sure performance from him. Carl Mack doesn't matter where he plays, does it? He, he just puts on a cracking performance. Again, tireless. And Aye. a lot of the work he's doing is the dirty work, Lauren. Should, you know, it, it, they're not highlights of the game, but it's absolutely um, so important for, for that kind of work to be done. A bit like Kyogo all over. The, not even the front third, Kyogo. I mean, the point was made by Brian, but he's coming deep. He's in his own half. There's, there's, he's go, it's going to pay off. The, what he does when he charges the goalie 
You see, when the keeper gets the ball at his feet and he's about 20 or 30 yards away from him, but he charges him and he goes at some pace and he, he jumps up, ho- hopefully getting a ricochet. And you know that that is going to happen at some point. It's going to pay off at some stage. The work rate of Kyogo and McGregor is, and Ralston, to be fair, is absolutely frightening. They're so important to this team once. Definitely. Well, I, you know, and I think that's perhaps Andrew's looking to them, same look, inspire the other guys. If you put in the work rate, you'll lift their game. David Turnbull, what a wee, that, that, that wee kind of lofty pass thing he does, you know, that, it, it makes it easy for McGregor to take in his chest because there's no pace in the ball, if you know what I mean. Kyogo went just everywhere, wasn't he? He was everywhere. Jota, I, I think that was only, you, you know, Abada was a bit quiet. James, he was good when he came on. Jota was the only sub really left that we could make that was still going to give us something. I'd have maybe brought Montgomery on for him rather than, than Mikey Johnson. I thought, you know, Mikey done okay, but that decision at the end, I was, you know, I was kind of horrified with him going, look, just see it out, just run it to Connor, lad, don't, don't run it to Fender. But, you know, great three points to get, uh, you, you know, but I think we're all kind of counting down the games now to the transfer window. We just need to keep picking up these points. Uh, absolutely, yeah, and you were, you were literally shouting at the screen when Mikey got the ball because we all knew he had to go out wide on the left, but he tried to go through the two bodies, which was the wrong decision, and he's lost the ball. And at that stage of the game, because it was the last part of the action, you know, you've only got 10 seconds to see the game out. He's, he's 22. It's not like he's 17 or 18. He should know by now, hit the corner flag. Um, but we'll run through, as you say there, Lawrence, the, the big thing is that lack of depth. I mean, you take off Jota, you replace him with Mikey Johnson and you're coming down various levels and and, and it shows. If you were to take off Kyogo there and, and bring on a Yeti as we did with seconds to spare, it's going to affect, you know, you, you see the work rate of Kyogo. A Yeti doesn't have that in his locker. Um, a batter for Forrest, you're happy with that. We've got two decent right backs, but you know, there's so many positions on that part. And I think that within two minutes of the game, let's go back to the first incident of the game. When Hart is lying down, we're not quite sure what's wrong with him. It's like he's had a body shock. Uh, you know, he can't, you know, he's got issues with his legs as well as his upper body. Uh, Bain's getting stripped and you just get a cold chill because you think, no, we don't want this. We really don't. Because it is to basically going from your first choice goalie to someone who possibly shouldn't be the second choice. And and you're kind of praying for January to come because there's so many positions like that. For example, someone at halftime was saying that Welsh should come off. If, if Welsh comes off at that stage, and I'm glad he didn't, but if he comes off at that stage, you're relying on Liam Scales at that point, Brian, who we've not really seen much from uh, we signed him for half a million pound from Shamrock Rovers. Seems to be a project of sorts, a bit like uh, Liam Shaw and Urigidi, where they're not going to be first picks. It might take them 6, 12, 18 months to bed in, um, if that. So at that point, you're you're seeing just how thin we are in the cent- central defensive area. When Hart goes down, you're seeing how, th- how thin we are in the goalkeeper area. When Kyogo or Jota comes off, and they're replaced by a Yeti and Mikey Johnson, we can see it again. So the January window is going to be huge. My big concern, Brian, is we don't get all the bodies in that we're going to require. Yeah, I think Colin said that a couple of weeks ago. We need probably about six players. Now, that might seem hyperbolic, but and to be fair, I don't think we can be shocked by it either, because I remember, you know, in the summer, when we were talking about Angie, even before Angie came in, and we said we could need up to maybe 13, 14 players. Mm-hmm. I know technically we get 12, but if you consider, you know, Liam Scales, Liam Shaw, Uragide, you know, they're not going to be first teamers. So yeah, <clears throat> you're talking eight or nine. So yeah, I think we need more. I think we need a, definitely, as I said before, the, the game, we need a backup keeper. I think we need a first choice left back because I think Juranovic, I think he's a quality player, but. There is an imbalance with him at left back, and you can see it with some of his crossing because he's not actually crossing off his left, he's cutting in. And you can see it, as good a player as he is, I don't think you're seeing what he's, the, <clears throat> what he's capable of because he's out of position. So I think we need a, a first choice left back, and certainly we need a couple of centre mids. I don't think we need a number six because Callum can play that role as well. Yeah. I feel like if he's. he's you know, maybe coming back into things, be Tom spoke about. But I do think we need a couple of, you know, really strong kind of attacking mids. 
you know, just more pressure off the ball because I thought Turnbull was pretty decent today, but you can see, you know, the if you if you imagine having two centre mids that press the way Kyogo does or the way Jota does, the difference that would make to us in transitioning defence into attack and so that's that's four right away. You probably need a striker because a Yeti's not going to cut it. You need somebody else for Jota, a left winger. So there's your, your first six. And even then you're still thinking, you know, if we get two good players for every position, I'm not sure. So a lot of work to be done. Um, but hopefully Angie's been quite confident in that this is going to be a much easier transfer window than the, his first mm. and his Chinese generally are. So, so fingers crossed, really. No, definitely. But again, there's so much when you look at that Celtic team to be happy with, Lawrence. You look at the backbone of the team and I would include Cameron Carter-Vickers in that. So you've got Joe Hart at the back and, you know, I've heard the cliche that he's always going to have a mistake in him, X, Y and Z. But I'll tell you what, what he brings to the table uh, is far greater. You've got Cameron Carter-Vickers who's putting in performance after performance, week on week, domestically and in Europe. And you're thinking to yourself in, when, in terms of the low knees, we're all getting very excited about you, Otto. Let's not forget about Cameron Carter-Vickers at the back. We've got to make that permanent. He's your first choice. He's your first pick. When every central defender we have is fit, he's still your first pick. And then you look at Callum McGregor. Again, the consistency, the work rate, unbelievable. You've got... Ralston solid on the right uh, hand side of the defence up front. You've got the flamboyance of of Kyogo and uh, on the left Jota, and then you've got Forrest coming back in. There's so much to be uh, positive about in this side, Lawrence. And I just think that we we'll get to that point in January if you, we really go out and strengthen. I don't mean as I've said a few times on the podcast, like for like, because I expect us to lose three or four. If we only bring in three or four, we're still going to be running short. So I think this opportunity in January, uh, if you've got a manager like Ange who can turn a player like Ralston into the guy that we see again today, who was brilliant today, absolutely superb, who can get a tune out of Beaton, probably in his natural position for the first time since about 2016 or 17. You know, that that I would say is, is the best we've seen him since that period. And then you're getting performances out of Tommy Rogic that we've not seen for a few seasons. Then I reckon you've got to put your trust in this this manager. And if the manager wants four or five players, I know Colin says six, I don't disagree with him. I just find it unlikely that we go out and get another six. If he needs four or five, you go out and you get those four or five because it's... This manager has worked absolute wonders with what he's got, Lawrence. Listen, I think everyone, even the board, although they don't agree with, with fans and much, uh, would agree that we're way ahead of where we expected to be this time of year. So I think that's the, a lot of that's down to, to Ange, uh, and they do have to back him. I mean, Brian's right. We were looking at, you know, in terms of attacking midfield, we were looking at subs that could change the game. Yeah. Forrest was an easy one. Then we're going, well, it's going to have to be your, but he's not really done anything to get brought off. He dropped out of the game a wee bit, but actually, we're bringing him off because we don't have that attacking midfielder just now to put on to replace Turnbull. Mm-hmm. We don't have somebody to change it. So we're going, well, we've only really got Montgomery or Johnston. I was shouting for Montgomery to come on rather than Johnston. But th- it shows how thin we are when we're going, we're, we're having to lose somebody like Jota because we don't have someone to bring on elsewhere in the park that's going to give us an attacking threat. So they've got to see that and we, as much as we slag the board, we've got to believe they're Celtic supporters. And what must they have thought when uh, Hart was targeted in the first couple of minutes? No protection by the ref. You know, he's down. Even they must have been kind of going, <laughs> you, 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 you know, this is looking bad. And Yota gets a stamp in the foot uh, almost as soon as Hart's up. You know, Ferguson turns round stamps in his foot. You maybe say that's uh, goes around in professional circles. You, you, you know, what is it? Danny McGrain's said so that was one of his hints from Tommy Gemmell. They can't even run by you with if they've got a sore ankle. <laughs> and who who was the player, Lawrence, that he tried it on again? It was Ajax, wasn't it? Aye, that was... Uh, Jess, Jess Brolson? Aye, Jess Brolson, because the first game he roasted Danny and, and Danny came off and apparently he was like, Tommy, look. Tommy's like, Danny, can't even run by you with a sore ankle. Just hit him early, <laughs> early in the next game and Danny was like, I did, so that was it. He didn't get by me then. But Danny still says that's how you get his... Yes, but also gets moved to Man United because he could beat Danny. He reckoned it was one of the the best players he ever played against. Jesper Olsen, eh? I well, he was saying, you know, that time they Celtic didn't look at the videos and stuff, so they were mm. completely unaware that this guy was a flying machine. So Danny had no warning until he was by him and 
he'd, he'd set up a goal, <laughs> you know, and he's like, yeah. But, you know, maybe Fer- that's why Ferguson's done that to Yota. But, you know, if it had worked, who would be bringing on then? It is such a drop down to Johnston or on Montgomery, isn't it? Well, my frustration, and I said it to you in the first half, Lawrence, is although Hart almost did come off um, and Yota was able to run it off, it's maybe taking them the wind out their sails for five, ten minutes. It's maybe taking a yardy pace off a player, although you wouldn't have known it with Jota. And I think that a lot of these uh, refereeing decisions or, or what they're allowing to happen, um, sometimes it's tiny margins. But if you add it up over a game, so Kevin Clancy today, I didn't think, had a particularly good game. Um, but it's at that stage where if I was to say to you, who would you like to officiate our games? It would be difficult to pick three or four that you, you were confident with. And, that, you know, that's no paranoia. It's just there's a whole list of bad decisions so far this season. And it is concerning. And I heard in the commentary that Ange Postacoglu is keen for the, the referees and the officials to protect our players. So I don't know if there's things going on in the background, as alluded to in the AGM, where the club are communicating with the authorities because some of the things that are happening and going unpunished are really absurd. Um, and I'm pretty sure a neutral perspective would be the same. Uh, I haven't had an update, actually, because we were concentrating on the game um, in and around what was happening with the the food bank collection before the match. So if anybody in the comments wants to bring us up to date with that, I mean, it seems ridiculous although unsurprising um, that the authorities were making life difficult for people trying to make a collection for those um, underprivileged within our communities and our societies. So keep us updated on that. Uh, And I think, I mean, I don't want to uh, labour anything on the the opposition, Brian, but that is a poor Aberdeen side. Uh, And I mean... You know, when I look at the uh, the Aberdeen fans who are involved in some of the other shows on the State of Mind platform, they are willing to give Stephen Glass an opportunity to get this right. But, I mean, you look at their form and it's really, really poor. They're, for me, you never... I was at that 9 nothing game that Lawrence mentioned, but you never expect it to be easy against Aberdeen, home or away. Uh, and we've, we've beaten up 2-1 up there and 2-1 here. But I think the scoreline today... Um, didn't give you the full story. I don't think that's a very good Aberdeen side we were up against today. No, I don't. I don't think so. I think you can see what he's trying to do. So I understand why people want to give him a bit of time. You know, they're kind of strong physical side, and I, th- I think they're trying to play football, but they're just it's not happening. To be fair, I don't know if today was a, a great account because I think that was more to do with how good we were. I suppose I think we'd be dominated for start to finish, but you're spot on about the scoreline. It's it, it does not reflect at all. Um, the actual the actual game and we've said that a few times this season at Celtic um, and I'll be honest to you when uh, Juranovic clears that offline I thought if we did through today that would be a travesty yep a real travesty speaking of which the referee in Scotland so I've yet to speak with referees on the pod at all but it's not just Kevin Clark they're all rotten and I, you know that's no great analysis but they are they're, they're honking. There's just a complete lack of consistency. Mm-hmm. Like some of the decisions are baffling. So when he books, you know, when he allows Mikey Johnson to run on after the alleged foul, Kyogo done, ball goes to Michael Johnson, he's running on, beats his man, and then he blows the whistle. And he's like, well, what took you so long? A, it was the foul in the first place. Mm-hmm. But what took you so long to blow it? We play advantage for Celtic, only to pull it back. Doesn't make any sense. The, the, how Ramirez never get booked in uh, for the Joe Hart thing uh, some of the treatment of Hyogo was a, a disgrace um, I put in the group chart at one point but he was in the box the ball came in the boy jumps right over the back of him yes him. Yep. You know, surely that's a foul no, no screaming saying penalty penalty but any other area in the park surely that's a foul it's, it's not as if Kugel's backed into him the boys come right over the back of him and it happened more than once um, Ralston gets done off the boy Samuel as well. That was a nasty tackle. That that was. Re- and by the way, I think it was mentioned in commentary the fact that Ralston doesn't go down easy. Um, no. So it was a particularly nasty one on Tony Ralston. Because he's I mean, he sliced him across the the, the, the yeah. front ends. It's a, it's a bad tackle. And and this is what kind of annoys me as well. It's like just because Ralston, you know, it's tough and won't go down easy, it doesn't mean it's not fair. He should still be getting booked for it. Doesn't matter mm-hmm. if he's doing easy or no. They shouldn't be saying, ah, well, I can handle it. Well, no, that's not right. You've got to protect him because that can be a real bad injury. 
and someone in Scotland, some Scottish footballers, going to get hurt really badly. And it's not just Celtic. You know, I, I, I'm not really a, a you know conspiracy theorist. I don't think that they're all like to get Celtic. I just think they're all rotten. Mm. And I think I'd, I'd agree with that. For, for some of the performances, even with the other teams and some of the decisions, particularly the, the Bobby Madden one featuring Aberdeen with the boy Ojo. Mm. I mean, bizarre to say the least. So that's my that's my two cents in rest. It's no, it's no news to anybody, but I just think something's got to be done because it's someone's going to get badly hurt. You, you, the point you make, though, Brian, and I think it's relevant, is um, you speak about two instances where Kyogo is taken out. First one through the back uh, when the ball is played over. The second one is where Bates hits him in the face. Lawrence mentioned that before. I think after the Livingston incident, we actually spoke about it in the post-match and we said that, right, he's made a meal of that. I mean, just because we're Celtic fans, we can still say he's made a meal of that, right, and he's gone down, although the boys hit him and that's the bottom line. It's a penalty kick. Absolutely no doubt about it. But I asked the question after that game, will he now be targeted in the respect that the referees will be looking at him thinking that he's at it? And I think those two instances today prove that that is their kind of perception of Kyogo Lawrence because those two instances that we've mentioned there were fouls all day, every single day, no matter what football park you're playing on. But because it's Kyogo now, I feel as though they think he's a bit of a play actor. Well, they think it's a play actor or it's an easier decision not to give it. You know what I mean? Because I know what Brian's saying. He's through the back of Kyogo. For me, it's a penalty. He's charged right through the back of him. The ref's going, give a penalty here. Nah, it's just easier to let that go. And but, Listen, the one where he's, he's hit him in the face, it, I don't know how he doesn't give it. But but it was things like the first half we get a throw in, we try to steal five yards, take it back. They were stealing yards all, all day long. No no more so in the last 10 minutes. It goes out nearly at the corner flag, you know, near our touchline. So they're really limited what they could have done. And then they, then they steal almost level with 18 yards. They almost steal 15 yards and get it through to a guy that's almost in the byline. And you go, well, well, Ref, you've created a situation for them where they can make this a more attacking free kick just by not applying the rules. It's Or David Turnbull going to take a quick corner. There's nobody down injured, an assistant referee puts his arm around him to stop him from taking a quick corner. Yeah. You're like, well, why can't we take a quick corner? Nobody's injured. Surely it's advantage to the attacking team. If we want to take it quick, we'll, we'll take it quick. It just, it, it's just the standard and the, the lack of consistency in the application of rules is really frustrating. But, you know, I, I've suggested before we, we share referees with, you know, other small nations, like, for example, Ireland, to keep the travelling costs down. And, you know, the Irish referees could come over here and referee and the Scottish referees could go over there for the big games, and surely no one would, would have any problems with that. We would, we would see. I'm sure they would figure out some kind of problem with that, Lawrence. Now, Sean Keogh, McCarthy's best game. Got to agree with you there, Sean. Uh, no, just because it's a told you so moment. I do like McCarthy, but I just think uh, even in the last kind of 15, 20 minutes, uh, I was expecting him just to, to bow out at that stage. And he's he's got the 90 under his belt. He was brilliant. He was instrumental in that goal, um, opening it up for a badder. That's what he does, really. You know, the defence splitting pass, and he did it again. But a wee bit fortunate, but, you know, McGregor put himself and his body in the line and, and he got the break and that's all you need. Jota, incredible. Want to talk about him in a second. Kyogo doesn't stop and McGregor was class. This is what I'm talking about, Brian. I mean, we've had a few wee grumbles here in the post-match, but largely you're looking at a side here where there are absolute pivotal players in there and we can build a really strong side around about it. And I think we're only about four or five players short of that. Yeah, and I, and I think actually we're well ahead of schedule. If I'm honest, uh, I said at the start of the season, my expectations were, although I was excited, were reasonably low because I thought it was going to take at least three transfer windows before we got anywhere near a, a, a start. I remember side. you saying that, and I didn't want to hear it. I was thinking, no, we need to win the league this year, Brian, you know. Yeah. But um, listen, it's not as if we don't want to win the league, but I just looking at it and looking at the shambles that um, was inherited behind, I thought, there's no, like, this is miracle stuff. You know, if we could turn this around in, in a season, given the, the shambles, that's 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 FIFA football and that's career mode. And I just thought, I, I, I don't know if I can see it. I, I'm still, you know, kind of in the middle here, but I tell you what, get into this transfer window. As you say, 
there's some real quality in that side and, and <laughs> regardless of some of the results though, you know, obviously Leverkusen result was big great, um, the few bumps in the road that <clears throat> I said on the, the Wednesday show that we're going to take a few black eyes over the season where we're, we're finding our feet and, and we have and we will again but Cameron Carter-Vickers looks an excellent signing if we can get him permanent that's great business What, what fee are we talking about Brian? What's the fee that, that's being well, it's two Vickers? Right. Two that, that's a steal Oh, absolutely. Um, I think it's two million for him and six million for Jota, which you've, you've got to do, in, in my opinion, right away. That, but that'd be the first thing I do before January. And do you reckon, but, but Brian, because that takes money out of your dran- January transfer pot, it depends how tight those agreements they buy are. Yeah. You know, if you can delay it because delay it it's so tight, it's just a question of when you pay the money. Because Maybe. You, you don't want to be pulling money away for your, 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 your January pot. I, I don't know what the first payment would be on. But is it six and a half, or two million, or six and two million? But you know that that could easily be at eight million in total. You might have to pay quarter up front. That's two million away from. Good point. Yeah, Andy Pot. Maybe yep. shifting players like you, you like a Barkas, a Yeti, Paul and Goalie, probably Uri Ede, Liam Shaw on loan, and maybe other a few fringe lads get a bit of money here and there. You, you've got to assume they're going to go, and if they do go, there's big wages. They're probably they're probably in decent wages as well. So I, I was still trying to get them, but your, your point's valid because given how we conduct our transfer business, if there's a way to, to find a way to save money, we, we probably will. Um, but in terms of positives with quoting players, to Cam Carter Vickers, I, I don't get the criticism of Stephen Welsh. I think he's come on leaps and bounds. I couldn't tell you how many teams Starfields had that he's been better than Welsh. I, I don't see much difference in quality between the two. Mm-hmm. Um, Juranovic, I've spoken about, I think he's a real good player. Um, Tobin Ralston is well documented. Callum McGregor gets a lot of plaudits and I still think he's underrated. I think he's an incredible footballer. Um, Kyoko we know about, Jota, so there's so much that you say to build on just for a couple of key areas. And then you imagine you can bring Turnbull, Roger off the bench, Abada off the bench. Um, there's a lot to look forward to. You just, you, you just hope that they're a wee bit less risk averse than in previous windows, especially in January. Because what we don't, we're talking, I think they said it's 10 games before the January transfer window opens. Mm. That's brilliant. But we've got a tendency to wait till the last day in January before we get anybody. And you know, there's there's a lot of football played in that time as well. So loads of positives, but still still cautious. Well, the, the thing as well, when it comes to January, as you said, Brian, is, you know, we do have a track record of not doing a great deal of business in January. I remember uh, Brennan Rogers going out and it was mainly relying on the, on the loan signings. That was the January we brought in Ollie Burke, if you remember, just getting bodies in the door. But I've got to say about Carter Vickers and, uh, and Jota, they've regained my faith in the loan market. Because last season I was shaking my head at the low knees that we were bringing in. Couldn't wait to get them back to their parent clubs. And then you've got two that you don't want to go back to their parent clubs. Now, this might be too simplistic. Um, Patrick McGill on, on Tuesday's bulletin a few weeks ago spoke about the two games we played against Livingston and the fact that we averaged 20 crosses into the box every half. So in the two games against Livy, we, we flighted 80 balls into the box and it resulted in zero goals. Um, and we've seen it again today, with, particularly with Jota, although Ralston is probably doing a better job of that than Abada when he's on. Um, but Jota, t- today, on Thursday night, and last Saturday against St. Johnston, uh, even you know flicking it and everything else, he's getting the balls into the box. And as much of a magician as Kyogo is, I don't think he's the type of person who's going to get on many of these cross balls. Do you think come January, we have someone in our sights or was that player Yakamakis who we felt might have had that aerial prowess? And I don't think we're changing our style here, by the way, because we're already playing the style to get somebody on the end of the, the crosses and it's great to watch, but we don't have that Sutty or that John Hartson in the box to challenge the goalkeepers, Lawrence. Do you think the fact that we brought Yakamakis in, that that probably isn't a priority for us? Should it be? Listen, he, he's stopped start career. You know, I think we've all decided. You know, a, a yeah, it's time for him to move on. Yakima, his, his way that is such a huge difference between him and Kyogo. Is he better than there? 
who knows what we've bought with him. He had one good season. But, but interestingly, the second half there, I think 10, 15 minutes in it, we, we noticed Jota when he's put, playing the ball across. It started to be lower and a bit of an interchange in the box rather than just throwing across in because there isn't a lot to hit, is there, with it? I think it's something that we'll, we'll definitely look at. You know, I'm sure and Ange will be doing his stats analysis and going, we can't be having this amount of crosses and zero goals from them or, you know, not getting a reward for them. There's something wrong there. But again, you know, even the players we've got running from midfield, who's good in there? It's, well, I, I wouldn't say it was McGregor, as, as good an all-rounder as he is. I wouldn't say it was Turnbull or Roger. Maybe Beaton's all right in there, he's a bit taller. Maybe McCarthy still to see it. But they're then at the back post, Abada looked okay when he was making the second he striker. Did, he, he did, and, yeah. James Evans would say he was great in there, but you, you are struggling right through the team. Who's mm. good in there? Mm-hmm. Set pieces, Welsh has done all right, isn't it? Cameron Carter Vickers has done all right. They, they win their, their fair share, but the problem is we really, there's no lot for the other opposition to mark in terms of when we throw a cross in, is there? That, that, who's our danger men? Uh, who, was the last, who was the last striker, do you think, that you, you could count on? To, to win these balls, Dembele, perhaps. I mean, I don't, I don't think it was the biggest strength of Edward, but I think maybe Dembele up front, he was one of those players. But I'm thinking more of a. I mentioned the Gina, uh, and Ferdinand um, comparison earlier on, but I'm just thinking, you know, a, a certain type, a, a Hartson type. I know these guys aren't easy to find, but is that what we're trying to get in Yakamakis? I know that quite a few of his goals last season uh, were with the head. Um, and, and I just think that it's not about changing our style, it's about bringing in a player, Brian, that fits the style. I think so, and I suppose there's two ways of looking at it, because say, for example, cause I think you're right, I think that's why G. Marcus was brought in, but if you see a player striker, and he's the big set of target man, defenders know they just have to mark him for crosses, right? So the, the flip side of saying, yeah, because we do put in a lot of crosses because we get somebody in the end. But what Kyogo does is the defenders don't know what they're getting. If it's going to be a low cross, high cross, they're going to pull them out of position if someone's running in from midfield. I suspect it would be someone, you know, with Lonnie's touched on it, that can run in from midfield into the box and go into these headers. You know, a, 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 a midfielder with a bit more presence as a number 10. I don't think it would suit us to have a kind of a, a traditional target man because you kind of know it might be effective but you kind of know what you're marking then mm. and I think that makes it a wee bit easier one of the strengths for us um, and again it, it's the off the ball press as well if you've got a big target man is he going to do the running that Kyogo's going to do is he going to make the spaces for Jota coming in so I think there's a lot of things to consider other than just do we need someone that's a good header that being said we do seem to put a lot of aimless crosses in you know, Lawrence is right, they did, Jota did start to change what he was doing in the second half, but the first half it was getting predictable towards the end. Um, so I suspect Jack Marcus was brought in to be that guy, but I don't think we would work well with a traditional target man. I just think we rely too much on the strikers pressing and the, the, the variation in movement. Well, uh, another suggestion coming through here that I'd completely forgotten about. It was Jan Venegur of Hesselink. He was always good for a goal. Um, up at Tanadice, I'll never forget that one as well, when we clinched the league title. Um, it's been a busy old afternoon for Axom. We're 1,200 strong live on the bulletin. Uh, Lawrence, something else you want to say yeah, there, Pop? It's, it's just, uh, obviously, the food, the food Bank fans getting fined. I believe there's protests now going on by the Green Brigade at the ground. And I'm wondering, you know, was that the aim? of finding these, these vans that were collecting food for Glasgow Sneedy at Christmas time. Was that the de- desired outcome? Because whoever's finding them, whether it's the police or Glasgow City Council, they knew there was going to be a reaction. I don't think anyone out there has thought, you know what, it's acceptable, those guys that are collecting food for people who can't afford that, you know what, ticket their vans. It's just ridiculous. And I think, on the face of it, is this anything to do with the Higgins appointment? Is this... You know, the authorities saying, telling the, the Green Brigade, you're too much poor, but we're going to st- almost stage a confrontation here by ticketing your vans. And this is perhaps the reaction they're looking for. 
That is a developing story, as they say, Lawrence. Uh, before we go, I just want to thank everybody for getting involved. We continue to grow the Axon platform. We've got massive plans moving into 2022. Next weekend is the Charity Weekender. We will be announcing tomorrow who the beneficiaries of any funds raised will be. What we've decided this year is there will be one location. There'll be one place where the money goes, and I'm pretty sure every Celtic supporter will be happy to hear who the beneficiary is going to be. Um, from time to time, we get contacted from people who watch and listen to a Celtic State of Mind asking for a wee shout-out. And a boy uh, who had, was in the studio recently uh, informs me that his old man, Jim Coleman, tunes in um, every single day to watch the Axon Bull, and, and he is tuning in from Melbourne. So big shout out to Jim Coleman. I hope you enjoy the show. As I say, up to 1,200 live there. We've been running a Celtic State of Mind now for four and a half years. Although we are just about at episode 800 on the podcast, if you were to add all the, the, the post-match and the pre-matches and the half times, we're away up at about 1,000 episodes. Every single one of those is free charge on the YouTube channel. So get on there and subscribe. As I say, loads more content coming our way. Lawrence Conley and Brian. You've, you've passed a late fitness test. Thank you so much for joining us on a Celtic state of mind. 